Hello again, everyone, and uh, this is November 5th, 2018. I've got another weekly Bible study lesson for you today as I help you to study the Word of God. This is another lesson in the New Testament is Fake series, and this lesson is titled Unapproachable Light of the Immortal Christ. I want to start out with 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 16, and listen to what it says. Who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Now, That complete verse is just a deception, and I'm going to show you why I say it's a deception, because, like I said, you need to learn how to study the Bible. Now, let's just take a look at this now, when they said, dwelling in unapproachable light, and nobody can see him. First of all, we need to understand that they're trying to let you know here that or try to get you to think of replacing God with Christ without understanding that that's what you are thinking. The text of the New Testament slowly smooths in this Christ like when you're buttering something on bread and it changes the taste of the bread that you're eating right? and that's it you're smoothing on this Christ doctrine from the New Testament and it's going to change how you process the Old Testament even though the Old Testament is fake as well but like I said lately I'm teaching this stuff so you can understand how I broke out of the deception. I first came out of the deception of the New Testament and then the deception of the Torah or the Old Testament. And I'm helping you if you follow my lessons in this New Testament is fake series as well as the other lessons I teach. If you follow them, you get to see a trend, a path to walk, to come out of it. Now, once you walk that path, for those who are brave enough, because religious people aren't brave enough to consider these things, then if you want to go back into it and stay into it, you can. It's your choice. I'm not telling you to leave anything. I'm telling you to think for yourself. Then you can decide. So now, he says he dwells in this unapproachable light. And no man can basically see this light and see him and so on. So let's deal with that seeing part first. Now, we know the scripture teaches that Moses saw God. If you look at the Ten Commandments, like in Exodus chapter 20 and in Deuteronomy chapter 5, and you read the commandments going on there, you get to like verse 20, 21, 22, 23, you know, after the Ten Commandments have been listed, it tells you that there was lightning and thundering and so on. And whatever else to say, I'm not going to read that scripture right now. But it's showing you all the rumblings and so on, right? And it's letting you know that they had an encounter with God. Now, you don't normally in the scripture see God the way you see a man. So when you see thunderings happen and lightning flashing and bright light and so on, that's to be taken as one seeing God. You have met God because that's normally the way you're going to see him. But sometimes it will say that you have seen an angel and so on. Um, but normally when you see this light flashing in the thunder, you have had an experience with God, an encounter with God. One has seen God because that's normally the way that he's going to approach you. If a prophet has that encounter or the children of Israel like at Sinai, you cannot rob from them that experience because then you would have said that they 
did not meet with God. If you take away the lightning, the bright light, the shining, the thundering and the rumblings and so on, then you're really saying they never met with God. If you remove that encounter with God that the children of Israel had, then if they never met with God because all of that has been removed, then the whole Torah flops because Israel never met with God, the prophets never met with God, Moses never met with God. So, if there were thunderings and lightnings and flashing and so on and pillar of fire and all those experiences that they had at Sinai in the wilderness, if all that happened, then they met God. If you meet God, then you saw God. You see, that, you see what I'm saying? You have an experience with Him. You have encountered God. Which is why um, when Moses met with God, even though they try to trick your mind to work witchcraft on your mind to say Moses never actually saw God, then on the next Sabbath meeting or in the next church service on a Sunday morning, they will tell you Moses saw God. So which is it? You see, because this is just another religion of Christianity or of Christian Hebrew Torah belief, they're playing with your mind, messing with your mind. The fact is that they tell you he never met God, he never saw God, and another time he saw God. Why? Because the only way to let this religion flourish and take off and so on is to mess with your mind, give you some kind of crazy concept in your mind that can swing two ways on a pendulum. He saw God, he did not see God. Moses saw God, Moses never saw God. He saw the back part of God, he never saw the front part of God. Now they tell you he saw the back part, but then they say he never saw God. Because he only saw the back, he didn't saw the front. Now if you saw my back, did you see me? Yeah, you just didn't see my face. It's like you're looking at somebody and they're hiding the stuff on their shirt. They don't want you to see. Or they, they, they don't want you to see their makeup or something and they hide it quickly. You know, they're at some amusement park and they got the, the stuff, big holiday stuff, and they got this face painted. They don't want you to see. So they try to hide right away and they turn away. Now you're seeing their side or the back of them. But they don't want to see their face. And they're like, no, 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 come on, let me see it. Now, at the moment when they're hiding and you're seeing only their side or their back, are you seeing the person? Of course, you saw the person. <clears throat> it cannot be denied that you saw the person because you were standing there talking to them. So people say, how did you know what they said? How did you know they were hiding their face from you if you didn't see them? So you saw the person. So God, according to the Torah, says, you can see my back, but not my front. But they tell you he never saw God. He saw God. If you today would see God on your lunch break and he only showed you his back, but there's bright lighting out in the parking lot and nobody else was out there with you, but people were right at the door and they saw the light flashing and they just knew from the presence that this can only be God that was in the parking lot. And you were the one out there he was talking to, but he only showed you, showed you his back. People come out there with cameras and they call the news media people and they come from the local radio station, wherever, and the TV station, they come and they're shining their cameras on you and they're interviewing you quickly, real fast. I only saw his back. You know what they're going to say in the news and in the newspapers printing and people writing books out of it later on saying, this man saw God. But yeah, he was in the parking lot, but he only saw the back of God. He only saw. Well, you, they're going to ask you, well, what, what, what kind of belt, what color belt was he wearing? What kind of pants was he wearing? Was he wearing, what kind of shirt was he wearing? You know, did you see his foot? Was he wearing shoes or slippers? Because they say, well, maybe you can tell that because is it like a regular slippers, like sandals, where you can see the back of his heel because it's not shoes? Or did you see a fully clothed foot? Wearing full-blown shoes and not slippers. Because they're not seeing the flesh of his heel. So the moment you can identify all those things and answer them. Is because you saw God but you only saw the back part of him. Did you see God in that case or not? So all the people telling you he didn't actually see God because he only saw the back part. That is rubbish. The Torah says he saw God. And we're going to read it for you here today. 
as we strike down how the New Testament is fake with Paul and Timothy and all of them teaching you about this fake Jesus Christ that you should worship. Now let's look at Exodus chapter 13 verse 18 and 19 and I'm not dealing with it here but I'll just mention to you that in verse 18 let me see if it's verse 18 and yeah actually in verse 19 the name of the Lord God of the script, Hebrew scriptures is in verse 19 I'm not dealing with it here, but I'm letting you know because I wasn't going to bother do, but I'm going to just go ahead and do some more lessons on the name series as I introduced it and told you that God has no name, but in a sense, there is a name, but there, it's not like a single word name like a Yahweh, no YHWH. The name, the only name of the Lord God of the Hebrews is in Exodus chapter 33 and verse 19. Right? But you read it and figure it out. I'm going to make the lesson. And I, I, yeah. But anyway, verse 18 here, Exodus 33, verse 18 and 19. And he said, because remember, Moses wanted to see God. So, you know, it's funny. Jesus said, and you say that Jesus is the Son of God and that Jesus is God. And you say that this God named Jesus who is the expression of the Father, who essentially is the Father, strangely. He said, and his teachings cannot lie as well as you taught, taught me. <coughs> you said that he taught that if you ask for fish, you're not going to get stoned, or bread, you're not going to get stoned, and so on, right? So what you ask is what you get. And he's saying that from precepts of knowing his father and his father's word and his father's Torah, which, according to your Hebrew teachings and Christian teachings, should be the Torah of Jesus, the son. Because if the father is the son, which is strange, like, are you your own son if you are the father of that son? But anyway, you say that this is his word and he cannot lie and so on. So if he says, if you're asking for this, he's not going to give you that. So if Moses is asking to see God, desiring to see God and pushing for it, why would God not let him see him? So, verse 18, and he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. That's the request right there. So show me thy glory means show me you. Just like every Christian and every Hebrew person wants to see God. From your child, you wish what could you, my child asked me from, she was so young, what does God look like? Where does he live and so on? Because you want to know all those things. You want to know what God looks like. And some Hebrews teach, just like some Christians teach, that God showed up in the, the, the fiery den, right? He showed up there. Delivered three Hebrew boys. He showed up there. So he can be seen. And then they tell you in another lesson that was Jesus that showed up. No matter how you slice it up, they're saying God can be seen. And he was seen in the time of Daniel and in the time of the Hebrews and so on, of the scriptures. So they tell you he cannot be seen, but then as they go on teaching you for the rest of the year, they teach many lessons telling you that he was seen. And they read the scriptures for you. So which is it? There is no clarity in Hebrew Torah teaching because it's a deception. It is witchcraft. The Torah is witchcraft. That will deceive all the world, but it was specifically designed and set up, put together to deceive blacks, to deceive the Negro. Because they put the black image of the people who are the Hebrews. Because it's you they're coming after to take down your ancient African Egyptian empires and Kushite empires and so on. That was a trick. And to take you over, over all the earth where you went to. And started the different civilizations over in the earth. North and South America and elsewhere. Everywhere you are. So... He said in verse 19, I will make my goodness pass before thee. In other words, he's saying, okay, I will show you my glory. In other words, I will show you me, like you're asking for. So is God going to lie? So whatever comes in the text later on means that Moses saw God. 
Moses saw God. I'll make my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim. You see the name of the Lord I told you about? I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Wait till I talk about proclaiming the name of the Lord in that name series again. And I'm going to show you the name of the Most High. And like I said, I don't believe this Hebrew stuff anymore, but I'm showing you based on the text how you can come out of the deception by understanding that the name Yahweh was a deception that works witchcraft. Yahweh is used to work witchcraft on you. And that's how you cannot come out of the deception of the Bible, of the Torah, or the New Testament, because the deception of, of the witchcraft has already hooked your mind. But I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. you right. For there, there my face, you cannot. In other words, you cannot see me in all of my completeness. So to say he's seeing only the backside is just saying that as a man, Moses can only see a part of him. So that no man can claim to have known all of God in all of his entirety. All of God qualitatively cannot be known. All of his fullness cannot be known. So the backside but not the face or not the front side is just a way to say you cannot know all of me. And claim to have all knowledge about me. But I'll give you something more than other people normally have. I'll show you my backside or I'll show you only a part of me. A limited side of me. Because to know God in all his fullness, that's just a mystery you're encountering there. So by saying only the backside of me is letting you know that to see God is to encounter a mystery, but after you see him, the mystery still remains because you cannot know all of the mystery in fullness because a mystery connotates the idea of something that you're still going to desire to know about even after you have found it out. That is a mystery. So he says, I will show you a back part so that you will get a revelation, but after the revelation, you still have something yet to be revealed. That you will still desire because you want the front part. So you got a revelation, but you still want more revelation. That's mystery. So verse 21, And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. So by me, so it's closeness. You see the whole language? I will show you my glory, and then a place by me, and I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy. Which means I'm not going to kill you with my glory. I'm going to do it in a way where you can still survive. And then a place by me showing that he is inviting Moses in to the inner recesses of what God is. But with limitation. So by me is showing that there is an opening up, an openness between now this God of the Hebrews and Moses. So that anybody who comes later on, 2,000 years later, telling you God never showed himself to Moses or that Moses never saw God is lying. Because the text here is showing you that God, Yahweh, as he is called, is giving openness to Moses, showing again that Jesus and Paul and Timothy is lying in the New Testament in 1 Timothy 6.16, when he's saying that he is dwelling in unapproachable light that no man can approach unto. Because he is giving him access here by saying, a place by me, in other words, he's saying, I invite you, come here by me, come close to me. Verse 22. Verse 22. And it shall come to pass while my glory, and you can't have his glory without his presence, and you can't have God's presence without God. So in other words then, God is saying, while my glory passeth, is saying, while I pass, by that I will put thee in a cleft, of the rock and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by cover thee and that's what they say see he never saw him because the hand covered him so if he covered him then he can't see so the covering by the hand means no revelation he cannot see he can't claim any knowledge right there he cannot claim any experience right there of seeing God 
of coming to awareness of this presence. But I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts. So if he says, I will take away my hand, then that means now you can see. Now you can have that experience. I will knock down the, min the, the, the mystery a little bit for you, so that you can see something of me. So if you say he put his hand so he can't see, then what is it when he took away his hand? That means sight. Moses saw God. Don't worry about no back part. Because if a thief is escaping and you the one that saw, but he was jumping over the fence with the bag that he stole and you only saw his back, the police will say, well, yeah, you saw, but you didn't actually see his face. But they will take the rest of what you saw to make a description to advertise in the news to say, the person who saw the man but only saw his back and didn't see his face said that the man was wearing black shoes with blue jeans and a red hoodie shirt with the hood over his head, but he didn't see. So he saw. So anybody seeing a person dressed in those garments that day, at that time of the day, if you saw where he ran, carrying that color bag, can you contact the police? Why would they advertise it like that? Because the person saw. But what he saw was limited, not in fullness. So Moses saw God with his eyes, because what else would he have seen him with? But did not see the fullness of God. So all the teachers are lying, and the New Testament is lying when it says, he never saw God. And we know as well that when Moses came down from Sinai and his face was shining, obviously that's the glory of God, that's how it was taught to us. He saw the glory of God. How can his face be shining with God's light? Because Moses doesn't normally have that light on his face. So he got the light of God because he saw God. He came away with the presence of God expressed in his face. He had the light of God on him. Because he saw God and saw God's light. And it lit up his face like a light bulb. So Moses saw God. And he saw the light that God dwells in. The light that is a part of the presence and expression of God. Moses saw God. Now let's go back to chapter 33 now. Verse 19. And he said, I will make my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim. Kara, from the Hebrew for proclaim. It says to call out, recite, cry out, and so on. Let's go down and take a part of the meaning of that now. It's rather identical, called out, chosen, and so on. And you can't be chosen and called out if you ever met with God. If you, That's why Israel was chosen, because God met with them and chose them. But... This kara is a primitive root, rather identical with some other word here, kara, which basically means um, accosting through a person met. So you've actually met with the person. So did Moses meet God? How will he know? He would have had to see God. And the fact that it says his face was lit up is telling you that he saw God with awareness in his eyes as evidenced by the scripture saying he had the light on his face. To make sure everybody knows when he comes down from that mountain, he saw the God of Israel. Moses saw God. Now here again in Exodus 24, 10, And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work, of a sapphire stone and as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. So they again they're seeing God, you know the whole 70 elders and so on. And they saw um as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. So in this seeing God, there was clearness, there was clarity in seeing God. Now, whatever it really means, exactly how they saw it, would have been nice if they drew a picture. And left it. But they didn't do that. But no matter what, it's still letting you know that they actually saw God. 
Now we know the scripture says you saw no similitude, but that's at that time. This time it says they saw God, and um, yeah, so there again they saw God, right? With clarity and clearness right there. That's what it's saying. So now let's run back now to First Timothy chapter six verse sixteen as we talk about this unapproachable light of the immortal Christ. Look at it now. So in First John, sorry, in in First uh, Timothy six sixteen again it says, "Who only hath immortality?" So they're talking about this Christ or this Jesus, the Hebrew Son of God, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto. But we just read from the Torah before the New Testament came around, supposedly, that other people approached the light. Moses and the elders, they saw God. Moses approached the light and he was so into the light that his face was left shining from it. But this here is saying, Jesus, the Hebrew Messiah, prophesied by Daniel, so that's a fake prophecy, that he only has immortality. How is that possible? Wouldn't it be the father that only has immortality, who cannot die? Because don't they say to us that Jesus died, John 3, 16. Jesus died, so he is not immortal. Jesus died. What is the main picture of Jesus in the Bible? Is that he was a man. When he starts interacting with people, he was a man who they say was God or the Son of God. He only has immortality, dwelling in the light. So if you say then God is the real light, then Jesus is dwelling in God. Which means God is the main source, not Jesus. And if Moses already saw God... Then Moses saw the ultimate light. So people are running up to Jesus. And Moses already saw the light that is God. Then how can Jesus be the only immortal one when the father would be immortal? Because Jesus died so he's not immortal. Because what is it to be immortal? It means you don't die, right? Dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto the New Testament lies again with this unapproachable Immortal Christ. Dwelling in a light which no man can approach unto. But Moses approached unto the light. The Hebrew God said, stand here by this rock. And I will pass by and put my hand to protect you from the light. But eventually I'll take away my hand so you can encounter and see the light. And Moses and them went up to the mountain and saw the God of Israel. They approached because they went to the light. The light in the burning bush and the angel standing in the light. That's God. So Moses approached, want to see the light burning, the fire burning. Moses saw God. That angel was God. That fire was God. The expression was God. The light was God. The fire was God. The angel was God. The whole experience was God. The revelation was God. Because the medium of God cannot be separate from God. God can only be expressed by God. Nothing else is able to express God to you. But God himself. So the Torah already told us that people approached God. But the New Testament here representing Christ and his apostles said... No man can approach unto him, nor hath seen, nor can see, but they saw God. I just read the scriptures for you, Exodus chapter 33 and Exodus chapter 24. Right, read them again, Exodus 33, 18 and 19. Although I read a couple of verses past that and also...